bats, one of the world's most misunderstood animals, often being called vampire bats or even blind bats. Yet, bats are one of the most valuable animals for our ecosystem, and not many know this. There are many different species of bats across the U.S. states, including my local one in Missouri. In Missouri alone, there are 14 different species of them. These species include more commonly known critters such as the big brown bat, the little brown bat, and the eastern red bat, to lesser known species such as the silver-haired bat and the Indiana bat. Perhaps the reason why there are so many misconceptions about bats is because of what is shown in the media about them, on top of there not being much education about them. Anthony G. Elliott, the Terrestrial Diversity Unit Supervisor at Missouri Department of Conservation, lists off these common misconceptions of bats. That all bats are vampire bats, all Missouri bats eat insects and spiders, that bats are blind, bats navigate in the dark using echolocation but they can see, that all bats roost in caves, all Missouri bats, except the gray bat and other species that used to occur in the state, roost in trees, bat houses, buildings, or under rocks at some point during the year, and several species do not use caves at all. Clearly, there is much to learn about these mysterious creatures. Firstly, there is a species of bat that does drink blood like a vampire, but they are not native to Missouri and only drink blood from other animals. The bats in this area primarily eat insects, being one of the top eaters of mosquitoes, which is, a, which is great for managing the pest population. Bats are also not blind. They do have pretty normal eyesight and only rely on echolocation in the darkness. And lastly, surprisingly, not all species of bats roost in caves. They can be found in a variety of spots, such as trees, buildings, or human-made bat houses. Clearing up these misconceptions is one thing, but why are these bats so valuable to our ecosystem? I spoke with Jordan Meyer, a bat ecologist from the Missouri Department of Conservation, and Kyle Jankski, a bat biologist from Missouri Department of Education, about this question. Jordan Meyer responded, two big ways bats are important are their contributions to pest management for humans and the role they play in cave ecosystems. Missouri bats are voracious predators of insects. Their fast metabolisms and calorie requirements for flight can result in an individual bat eating hundreds of insects through a single night. The types of bats generally depend on the species of bat, but many of which impact humans as agricultural pests or as vectors of disease. Lastly, large appetites lead to a lot of waste. Bat guano in caves often provides the base of the food web and those decomposer-based ecosystems. Additionally, Kyle Jankski added, I'll add that since many of the insects that bats eat are nocturnal, bats are their only major predators. Most other potential predators are asleep while these insects are active. As mentioned before, bats are a great source of pest management, as they are active at night when most pests are also active. And additionally, bats need a huge caloric intake due to their high metabolism rate, Therefore, they can eat hundreds of insects in one night. This is great for managing the mosquito population, and is also great for lessening the amount of pests that put agriculture at risk. Bats even have valuable waste, as their waste deposits in caves help cave ecosystems to flourish. Cave ecosystems may not affect humans directly, but pests certainly do, and having less damaged food crops as well as less risk of disease from potential mosquito bites are both huge advantages to us from having the bat population flourish. Bats are valuable members of our ecosystem, but what can we do to protect them? Sadly, many species of bats are on the endangered species list, including eight of Missouri's bat species. This is over half of the species of bats in Missouri that are at risk. What can be done by the general human populace to prevent further decline in these bats? Anthony G. Elliott, Jordan Meyer, and Kyle Jankski all gave their input on what we can do to help these wonderful creatures. Learn all they can about bats and become involved in bat conservation. Bat Conservation International has a great website that is, good, that is a good place to start. Don't use insecticides any more than needed. If there's not a safety issue or risk to a building, don't cut down dead or hollow trees. Several bat species use these trees as roosts. Do not disturb bat colonies in caves. Bat houses can provide stable roosting locations, however, many bat houses do not get used. One of the best things the public can do for bats is to educate themselves and gain an appreciation for these animals. 
Those that have the means could consider providing a properly constructed bat box or leaving dead trees standing on their properties to provide habitat. Another thing that the public can do to help. Avoid disturbing bats in their natural habitat. One of the biggest threats to bats worldwide is the loss of roosts and habitat. Thankfully, there are many things we can do, such as becoming more educated about bats, avoiding usage of insecticides when possible, leaving dead trees be as long as they are not a safety risk to allow bats to roost in, not disturbing bats in caves, and building and putting up bat houses. Having successful crops and less pests is certainly important to human survival. Thus, the survival of Missouri's bats and bats all over the world is important too.